Well, that's certainly a lot more high quality than the video I released like five stinking years ago. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcome back to Kirby's Dream Collection. Yes, this is not a new Let's Play. It is a continuation of an old one. My most beloved Let's Play of all time, Kirby's Adventure from Year One. Why did I decide that this of all Let's Plays needed to continue? Well, because it's sort of a awkward phase on my channel. It was my third Let's Play. It was one that I wasn't really all that passionate about. I just sort of wanted to play a Kirby game, but I had a really crummy capture card at the time that wouldn't allow me to show off one of a higher quality Kirby game without sort of ruining the graphics of it, like Epic Yarn or Return to Dreamland. So because of that, I wasn't really able to have much of an option aside from one of the older games. So I just went with Kirby's Adventure, and it was kind of a bad Let's Play. It was just... Not really passionate about it, and uh, not really good at commentating back then, so even though Conker's Bad Fur Day is my least favorite Let's Play, Kirby's Adventure is probably the worst Let's Play on my channel. What a great way to advertise this new series, am I right, guys? So basically, what are we going to be doing? Well, I just want to go uh, ahead and uh, take a trip down memory lane and uh, see what the collection disc actually had to offer, because it's actually really cool. It came with a music disc and art book, for those of you who pre-ordered it, along with all the pre-ordered goodies and whatnot, back when this thing was new, but I want to go and look at the other modes, like Kirby's History. This was really cool, it's just like uh, going through a museum of like stuff that happened in the world at the same time that Kirby games released. So in 1992, when Kirby's Dream, Dream Land released, uh, the Summer Olympic Games were held in Barcelona, Spain. A uh, space shuttle on Endeavor <laughs> made its uh, maiden voyage, and Bill Clinton was elected President of the United States. If we go into 1993, where we have Kirby's Adventure and Kirby's Pinball Land, we have uh, the European Union was founded, Intel released the first pen Pentium processor, Janet Reno became the first female Attorney General of the USA. I wonder what was the deciding factor in like choosing all of these specific facts. Is like, are they the same in the Japanese version, or is it like... I have no idea what the deciding factor was, just like... Uh, top three most exciting things that happened in 1993, Google search, go. Uh, 1994, there were no Kirby games released, but we have Fololo and Folala uh, here for some reason. Uh, the Winter Olympics games were held in Lillehammer, Norway. A record-breaking 3,011 pound lollipop was made, and the first genetically engineered tomatoes went on sale. Well, that seems like a bit more Kirby-oriented, but like the other ones with like presidents and Olympics and stuff, I wonder why they went with those. Uh, 1995, the DVD format was announced. What? In 1995? Okay, I don't know anything about stinking technology, apparently, because I didn't get DVDs until, like, 2005. Uh, Cal Ripken Jr. broke a record by playing his in his 2131st consecutive Major League Baseball game, and Nintendo released the greatest console of all time, the Virtual Boy. If any Nintendo character was going to give love to the Virtual Boy, it would be Kirby, of course. And of course we have uh, Kirby's Dream Land 2, uh, Kirby's Avalanche, and Kirby's Dream Course. What was if I press A? Uh, do I look at trailers for them? Because I can't play all these games here. Skull Expire. Okay, it just lets me look at a trailer and stuff like that. Okay, so what happened in 1994 again? A whole lot of nothing. <laughs> a whole lot of sucking, I guess. He's all tuckered out. In 1996, the era was born. The, sum the Summer Olympic Games were held in Atlanta, Georgia. Nintendo released the Nintendo 64 and the Game Boy Pocket. And we got uh, Kirby Superstar and Kirby Block Ball. Uh, the one with the controller is one like a game that is actually featured on here in its entirety that you could actually play. Uh, here we got 1997, the UK returned control of Hong Kong to China. The first Harry Potter book was published in the UK. Harry Potter is canonically a Kirby character now, as far as I'm concerned. The first mass-produced hybrid vehicle, the Prius, launched in Japan. And we got 1998, there were no Kirby games, but the Winter Olympic Games were held in Na Nagano, Japan. Assembly of the International Space Station began. Nintendo released the Game Boy Color. 1999, we got uh, no Kirby games, but the first non-stop trip around the world via hot air balloon occurred, and Kirby's sort of like hot air balloon. 
uh, the world's population reached 6 billion, and that's probably the amount of people that Kirby's eaten throughout his life. And Kirby appeared in the first Super Smash Bros. fighting game, so that's really cool. Year 2000, in the year 2000! Uh, similar Olympic Games were held in Sydney, Australia. The International Space Station received its first resident uh, crew, and George W. Bush was elected President of the United States, and George W. Bush is officially a Kirby character now. Uh, in 2001, a 16-year-old successfully climbed Mount Everest, and Nintendo released Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo GameCube, aka the best console ever made, period. And also Kirby Tilt and Tumble, but we don't talk about that game. In 2002, the Winter Olympic Games were held in Salt Lake City, Utah. East Timer began, uh, became the first new country of the 21st century. Wait, what? That's cool. They made a new country. They <laughs> made a new country. They formed a new country and oh, whatever uh euro coins are in notes entered circulation as well as uh kirby nightmare in dreamland which is i believe it's just a remake of kirby's superstar and then uh you actually could watch three episodes of the anime series kirby right back at you i would watch this if it didn't uh result in copyright but uh unfortunately that's not the case so we're not going to be doing that in 2003 the greatest kirby game of all time was a uh, release Kirby Air Ride if you missed the video that was released later today I announced a let's play of Kirby Air Ride that could go on forever if you so desire it to it is completely patron powered Which means you could donate five dollars a month and have a new episode come out It's pretty cool if you think about it or it's pretty lame if you don't care <laughs> um, The human genome project was completed Concord made its final commercial flight and Nintendo released the Game Boy Advance SP pretty cool in 2004, the Summer Olympic Games were held in Athens, Greece, NASA's uh, Rover's Opportunity, and Spirit landed on Mars, and Nintendo released the Nintendo DS. And back, and all the way in 2005, Nintendo released a game for the Nintendo DS. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's basically what it was for like all of Nintendo's consoles back then. Danica Patrick became the first woman to lead an, uh, an Indianapolis 500 due to a lockout. The Stanley Cup went unclaimed for the first time since 1919. And Nintendo released Game Boy Micro, which were really cool little thingies, even though people didn't really like playing with them, it was just cool to collect them. And Kirby Canvas Curse was released, a really underrated Kirby game. Uh, 2006, the Winter Olympic Games were held in Turin, Italy, and Nintendo released the Nintendo DS Lite and the Nintendo Wii, a very revolutionary year indeed. And I guess Squeak, Squeak Squad was there as well. Uh, in 2007, the final Harry Potter volume became the fastest selling book in history. A record-breaking 10-ton ice cream float was made, mm, ice cream, in Kirby's face, and Nintendo unveiled the Wii Fit and the Wii Balance Board, and I don't know why Kirby's sleeping now all of a sudden. Uh, in 2008, we have the Summer Olympic Games were held in Beijing, China. Barack Obama was elected President of the United States, which now means- Oh, Kirby's waving to Obama! Hi, Obama! Kirby and Obama are buds, and Obama's the best Kirby character now. Uh, Nintendo released the Nintendo DSi. I missed the DSi. In 2009, Oh wait, what game was that? Oh yeah, Kirby Superstar Ultra, which was another Superstar remake. Nintendo really likes that game, apparently. Uh, in 2009, the presence of water on the moon was confirmed. For the first time, annual global energy use dropped, and the 21st century's longest total solar eclipse occurred. Very, very cool. 2010, the other greatest Kirby game of all time released, Kirby's Epic Yarn. The Winter Olympic Games were held in Vancouver, Canada. Maybe it was just like in the peak of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, so people actually gave a darn about the Olympics in their video games, so that's why it keeps getting mentioned here. Uh, the Winter Olympics were held in Vancouver, Canada. The first 24-hour flight by a solar plane took place. Nintendo released the Nintendo DSi XL. And in 2011, oh boy, getting to the end of the DS life, the world's population reached 7 billion. Nintendo unveiled the Wii U and released the Nintendo 3DS. I didn't think they were so close together, but apparently they were. And we got Kirby Mass Attack, a pretty underrated Kirby game. It's pretty fun, all things considered. And Kirby's Return to Dreamland, a game that I very, very love. I very, very love. In 2012, the world ended, or at least it was supposed to. But really, the Summer Olympic Games were held in London, England. Nintendo unveiled Miiverse. Oh, rest in peace, Miiverse, but Kirby waves to it. And we celebrated Kirby's 20th anniversary. How lovely. What's the video here, I wonder? Uh, see games watching music video. Uh, I'm not sure if this would lead to copyright, so I not gonna do it unfortunately you're gonna have to get the game for yourself and or look it up on YouTube maybe if I get to do a clearance or I could just check it out maybe we'll do that as a finale thing yeah finale thing as in we're actually gonna be doing stuff in this LP besides just looking at museum stuff uh, we do have like a little challenge stages it's like extra levels of return to dreamland which is kind of cool but the main cream of the crop for this LP 
is the classic titles. When I said that this LP was sort of in a awkward phase of my first year, it's that I did not just Let's Play Kirby's Adventure. I released a Let's Play called Let's Play number 2.5, which was Kirby's Dream Land. I guess you could consider it to be the very first April Fool's Day LP, even though it didn't release on April 1st. It was more so meant to just be a joke LP that was a single episode, and it was meant to announce my actual third Let's Play, Kirby's Adventure. This episode was also really boring and a very lame Let's Play, and I don't recommend going back to watch it, but basically, I did play this game already, and I played this game already. But as I've mentioned in my six year anniversary video, I want to finish my Let's Play journey at 120 Let's Plays. And I think it would be kind of awkward if we finished off the thing and I had 125, 120.5 Let's Plays with a 0.5 LP in the playlist mix. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be mixing those two LPs together. Let's Play number 2.5 and Let's Play number 3 will now be formed into one to be known as Let's Play number 3 Kirby's Dream Collection. That's how it's going to be made, and uh, that's what the place is going to look like from here onward. I doubt anybody at this point even noticed the two different playlists to begin with, because they're such old LPs, and I doubt anybody cares, but it's always something that was in the back of my mind, and like something that I've always wanted to update or change or whatever. I've always wanted to go back to this Let's Play or this game and finish the other Kirby games that I never got to. So, here's what I'm going to be doing. These are going to be live streams. I have never played Kirby's Dream Land 2, or Kirby's Dream Land 3, and I've never beaten Kirby Superstar or Kirby 64. So, I don't know when they're gonna happen, probably not right this second because uh, this is a very weird, awkward time to be announcing this stuff, but I had to announce it along with my Kirby Air Ride LP and all that jazz, uh, because I'm in the process of moving. But basically, I am going to be streaming these four games from beginning to end at some point throughout year eight. That is my promise to you. It's something that I've been meaning to do for a very long time, and this is just my way of calling myself out and finally doing it. So then, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I think we're gonna start with, like, I think we're just gonna go in order, because we did Dreamland first, then Adventure, so why not, we'll just keep on going in order. So the first stream will be Kirby's Dreamland 2. I don't know if they'll be in one city, I have no idea how long this game is. Then Kirby Superstar, then Dreamland 3, then Kirby 64. I'm going to attempt to get all these streamed and finished in year 8, and if you miss those streams, then they will be uploaded to YouTube later down the line. But yeah, it was just a way of uh, getting these games done, but I know like I'm not super passionate about any of these games, so I didn't think they would make good Let's Plays, but maybe it's just chill little streams that uh, I could talk to people with. Maybe people would find more enjoyment of it through that way. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And yes, with all the Kirby content I just announced for my channel right now, it is officially now going to be known as the Year of Kirby. Because I said so. I hope you look forward to it. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later with Kirby's Dreamland 2. Good night. <laughs>